I'm going to tell you guys the top 10 scams in Pokemon and how you can avoid them. Let's get started right now. What's going on guys? My name is PokeRev and welcome to the Poke Cave. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my vintage Pokemon videos. So, Pokemon is an awesome hobby and there's a lot of great people in the community, but there are scams that you guys have to watch out for. Here's my top 10 list. Okay guys, let's start off with a big one here. Number 10 spot, Mystery Power Cubes. You can find these at Walmart for about 20 bucks and it's just filled with a bunch of junk. They throw in about 60 cards, common cards, uncommon cards. They buy them up in bulk. It's a third party company that makes these. It's not Pokemon. So you're getting it from a third party company and they're just doing whatever they want. And the first thing you're gonna see here is they throw a Shining Charizard on the front there and you have all these base starters like Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur. And actually, I purchased this on Walmart.com and the image of the product they have on there is the version of this where they show a first edition base Charizard, which you're never in a million years gonna pull out of one of these. It's targeted at kids and people just in general that wanna pull vintage cards. Totally not worth it. If you go on Walmart and you look at the reviews, most of them are one to two stars. I would highly advise you to avoid them. Instead, take that 20 bucks, and maybe you could buy a Japanese Gym Heroes pack, and in these, you're actually gonna pull a vintage holo card, so that would be something I'd recommend instead. And if you were gonna buy two of these mystery power cubes, you might as well just buy a fossil or a rocket pack. These are about $40 each, and you have a one in three chance of pulling a vintage holo. So that is why I would avoid those at all costs. Moving on to number nine, trimmed, altered or restored cards. Now this one is not restored, but just to show you guys an example of what to look out for. Somebody could sell a card like this on eBay to an unsuspecting victim. And what they'll do is they'll color in the back border with a blue marker so that you won't see any of the whitening on the corners or on the edges if it has damage. What that'll do is when you try to send that in to get graded to PSA or Beckett, they're gonna identify that as having restoration done to it. So they won't grade the card and you're gonna be getting scammed out of it. Another thing they'll do is they'll trim the borders around here so that the centering is better. That way, when PSA looks at it, they'll see that the borders are very even and then you'll typically get a higher grade. Now, PSA normally will identify that and they won't pass it through the system. So, in turn, you're gonna be getting scammed because you're gonna be buying a card that's been altered and you can't grade it at all, and the value is gonna plummet. So that's something you really wanna look out for. Coming in at number eight is gonna be fake eBay listings. Now, typically, you'll find an account that's using fake pictures and they're trying to sell a product that they do not have. A lot of times, it'll be somebody with zero feedback and you can tell that by looking at their feedback score and seeing if they had recently sold anything or if it's a new account. Typically with a brand new account, when you start seeing very high valued items coming up, I would avoid it at all costs. Most of the time, it's gonna be a scam. Another thing that I see a lot is accounts that are hacked and they do have high feedback, but what happens is somebody hacks the account and then they start adding all these high value items in there and they try to grab all the money from the account quickly because it has high feedback and it looks like it can be trusted, but in many cases, it's a scam. Moving on to number seven, sending payments through friends and family on PayPal. Now, this isn't always a scam and you can do this with highly rated sellers or people that have been selling on eBay or in the Instagram community for a very long time. There's a very short list of people that I would recommend doing this with, and 99.9% .9 of the time, I would advise against it. When you send a payment through friends and family and not through goods and services, you are not protected. So what they can do is they can actually scam you out of everything. If you send them the payment, they get it friends and family, they can deposit it into their bank account, and you have no protection. PayPal will not help you out at all if it was send friends and family because that type of payment is meant to be sent to friends or family, not for goods or services. So they won't protect it. So that's a quick way to get scammed 
out of a high value item. Up next, number six, we have fake cards. And when I say fake cards, I'm not talking about custom cards, which some people are artistic and they create and they are not trying to create a duplicate or a fake of an actual card. Here we have an actual fake card that is trying to duplicate the real thing. As you can see, it is fake. Uh, you have that star hollow pattern on the back there of the hollow. So this is a fake card and actually all the cards in here, they're all fake. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience and you're new to collecting, or even people that do have a lot of experience, they could fall for this scam pretty easily. You could buy a big binder of cards and they could all be fake. So always make sure to be careful if you do not know what you're purchasing and you don't know how to spot fake cards. Coming in at number five is mystery boxes. Now, these are somewhat similar to the mystery power cubes that I had mentioned in number 10, but these are made more by individuals in the community or sometimes eBay sellers. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some big eBay sellers and people in the community that make legitimate mystery boxes. Uh, just coming to mind, TCA Gaming would be the number one spot where you can buy them and they are actually legitimate, which I would highly recommend if you were going to buy any, to buy them from him. Now, you can buy these from a lot of different people, a lot of different no names that have no background history in the hobby and are not well known. I would highly advise not buying them from random people because they could charge you just say a thousand dollars for a mystery box and they could just fill it with a ton of junk, you know, maybe a hundred dollars worth of cards and packs and you're going to be out a lot of money because they said it's a mystery box and they never indicated what kind of a value you're going to get out of that mystery box. It could be filled with tons of different cards that are worthless and really just them unloading a lot of different things that they can't move or just don't have much value. I would not recommend buying a mystery box from random people. Number four is gonna be GMA graded cards. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of PSA, which is the leading company for grading Pokemon cards, as well as BGS. The other company is GMA. I would highly recommend staying away from any cards graded from them. They have an address listed on their website for their business, and it's a residential house. The other things on their website are, there's a lot of typos, and they're not transparent whatsoever about the grading scale. Also, when they grade the cards, they're very inaccurate with the grades. Those are just some of the reasons I would stay away from them. But the main reason is that they offer custom grading services. You can actually send your cards to them and you can have them fill out on the label a company that you can completely make up the name of the card and you can grade the card yourself. Yes, you heard that right. You can grade the card whatever grade you want it to be. So if you have a beat up card, you could say you want it to be graded in 10 gem condition. You could send all your cards to them, make up a grading company, and then you can put them all on eBay. And that is a huge scam. I would stay away from anything that has to do with GMA. Moving on to number three, we have grading services. Now, the way that this works is sometimes there are people that will take your cards, they will sleeve them up for you and send them off to PSA or BGS, and they will charge you a fee for them to take care of that whole process for you so you don't have to do it. Now, I would highly recommend against this. 99.9% .9 of people that are doing this are uninsured, so they can take your cards and they can get lost in the mail or something like that. They can get damaged and there's nothing that they're gonna be able to do for you. Another thing is, if the person is not trustworthy, they can take your cards, they can swap them out. Heck, they could just keep the cards for themselves, grade them, and never send them back to you. Now, there is one company I would recommend that's Ludkin's Collectibles, and they're fully insured. They will grade your cards, you can send them in, into them, and they actually have better prices than what you could get on your own. So I'll leave a link down below in the description if you wanna get in touch with them and get your cards graded with them. 
Otherwise, I would not recommend getting your cards graded by any other third parties. Coming in at number two is gonna be resealed packs. There are people out there who will open booster packs and they will take out all the good cards and fill it up with junk and try to scam you and they will actually reseal it. Now this is actually a fake pack, but just to give you guys an example, I don't know if you can see, but you can see that the crimps down here are completely gone. That's one way you can tell that it was resealed. And other things that people do are they will try to glue it back together. And there are certain things that you can look out for on the packs, especially along the crimp lines and back here where you can tell if it was resealed. And in that case, you were scammed. Taking the number one spot on my top 10 list of scams is Wade Packs. Now, this isn't always a scam if you know what you are purchasing. In my opinion, if the seller is disclosing if the pack is weighed heavy or weighed light and you know what you're purchasing, I don't think it's a scam. I think it's a legitimate way to buy packs and sell packs. Now, people's opinions vary on that topic, so I won't get into too much details about that specifically, but what I'm talking about is when you go on eBay or you go on Instagram or wherever and you go to purchase packs and you think that you're buying unweighed packs with a one in three chance of pulling that hollow card and the seller is weighing them light and selling you packs that they know do not contain hollows, that is 100% a scam and that is probably, in my opinion, the number one spot for the biggest scam in Pokemon. So that's gonna be it for my top 10 list of scams in Pokemon. If you think I missed anything or if you were scammed, leave a comment down below and let me know about it. Other than that, check out a couple of my other videos over here and make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.